you know, I, I, I've, I've never in my adult life really had anything to do with, I've not voted in US elections, I, I've not uh, bothered to even pay attention to it because I know it's rigged. The voting in America is such a, let's remember George Bush in 2000 didn't even get the majority of votes. It's so blatant and in your face, America. You don't have a democracy. Never mind the fact that the man who was president for eight years didn't get the majority of votes. You have an electoral college system. How many of you Americans even know what that is? Electoral college? It's a throwback to the 17, 1800s. We have modern technology and we have an electoral college system. It mocks you. It's a joke. Let's get into the electronic voting machines. What a farce. An absolute farce. They're totally rigged. There is no democracy in America. It's not a democracy. And it shouldn't even be a democracy. It's a republic. That's what the founding fathers set up. A republic. So anyway, I have to though, now at this point, I have to say something. Ron Paul makes such a great point in a film that's been made to promote him. It's a point that I've made for some time in my own way and the analogy that I used was let us imagine for those of us who can even conceive of things beyond what we've been spoon-fed all our lives imagine that America was not the most powerful nation in the world imagine that it was a relatively powerless nation now imagine that the most powerful nation in the world invades America, the homeland that I come from my birth nation. Imagine as an American that you sit in your homeland bothering no one and this big powerful nation come and invades us. They invade us, they occupy us, and they pay Americans to collaborate with the invasion and the occupation. They kill our own family in mass, mothers and fathers, brothers and sisters, sons and daughters, murdering them in mass, destroying our country, stealing our resources, all the while playing themselves as our saviors. Imagine the hatred that you would feel and what would you do? Now, if it were reversed, if it were reversed and we were being invaded, what would we say about the men, the able-bodied men, who did nothing while this was happening? I know what we would do. We would call them cowards for doing nothing. And yet, we call those people who do nothing our friends in Iraq and Afghanistan, the collaborators and the ones who do nothing. Those are our friends. In truth, they're cowards, which is understandable given the overwhelming force. Now, let's go back to America, not the powerful nation being invaded by some bastard nation halfway around the world, bastard nation. What would those of us who actually fought, what would we be considered? When we fought, would we be insurgents or terrorists as we call those people in Iraq and Afghanistan? No, we'd be fucking heroes is what we'd be. And that's what this film does. And it's just one of the many facets of what makes Ron Paul so special so incredibly special. Watch this film. Soak it up, Americans. Imagine for a moment, a moment that somewhere in the middle of Texas there was a large foreign military base. Say Chinese or Russian. Imagine that thousands of armed foreign troops were constantly patrolling American streets in military vehicles. Imagine they were here under the auspices of keeping us safe, or promoting democracy, or protecting their strategic interests. Imagine that they operated outside of U.S. law, and that the Constitution did not apply to them. Imagine that every now and then they made mistakes or acted on bad information, and accidentally killed or terrorized innocent Americans, including women and children, most of the time with little or no repercussions or consequences. Imagine that they set up checkpoints on our soil and routinely searched and ransacked entire neighborhoods of homes. Imagine if Americans were fearful of these foreign troops and overwhelmingly thought America would be better off without their presence. Imagine if some Americans were so angry about them being in Texas that they actually joined together to fight them off in defense of our soil and sovereignty because leadership and government refused or were unable to do so. 
Imagine that those Americans were labeled terrorists or insurgents for their defensive actions and routinely killed or captured or tortured by the foreign troops on our land. Imagine that the occupier's attitude was that if they just killed enough Americans, the resistance would stop. But instead, for every American killed, ten more would take up arms against them, resulting in perpetual bloodshed. Imagine if most of the citizens of the foreign land also wanted these troops to return home. Imagine if they elected a leader who promised to bring them home and put an end to this horror. Imagine if that leader changed his mind once he took office. The reality is that our military presence on foreign soil is as offensive to the people that live there as armed Chinese troops would be if they were stationed in Texas. Shutting down military bases and ceasing to deal with other nations with threats and violence is not isolationism. It is the opposite. Opening ourselves up to friendship, honest trade and diplomacy is the foreign policy of peace and prosperity. It is the only foreign policy that will not bankrupt us in the short order as our current actions most definitely will. I share the disappointment of the American people in the foreign policy rhetoric coming from the administration. The sad thing is, our foreign policy will change eventually, as Rome's did, when all budgetary and monetary tricks to fund it are exhausted. You know, I, I've, I'm really in a very different spot than normal because I've, I've just never even thought about endorsing a political candidate for president in the United States um, since I was a very stupid person. Not that, you know, uh, uh, in recent history <laughs> have I entertained the idea, but I just uh, cannot help but uh, endorse Ron Paul. I have never seen anybody in my adult life with the kind of integrity that Ron Paul so very clearly has. His voting record is consistent with what he's said in the past. There is always, always of course, a chance that you'll vote someone into power and then they won't do what they said they would do. Every single candidate who's ever run uh, in modern history, it seems, does that very same thing. But Ron Paul has a record of voting in Congress consistently with what he has campaigned on. The things he is saying are absolutely 100% counter to the interests of the powers that be. What I love about Ron Paul more than anything is the Federal Reserve, that bastard, rich, fucking bastard, 1% uh, Federal Reserve private shareholders who we don't know. That system is the head of the snake and for any person to be confronting that as he is at that level and talking about the Federal Reserve and getting rid of the Federal Reserve, Kennedy was killed because he threatened that system. This man has balls, he has integrity, and for the Federal Reserve issue alone I could support him. But now we get into his stance on the war on terror, the farcical war of terrorism known as the war on terror. His view on uh, foreign policy, they want to try and say liberals and wankers who try and paint this whole isolationist idea. Not occupying, invading and occupying other people's land is not isolationist. It's just intelligent and moral. Getting out of Afghanistan, getting out of Iraq, stop bombing Pakistan, get the hell out of Palestine with your support of Israel. These things would save countless lives. There is no question at all that Ron Paul is the best hope America has on a political level. All the power, the real power, does not reside with one person, however. As much as I love Ron Paul, he is not the answer in himself. He could be assassinated, we could pin all our hopes on a guy like that, he might not do what he says, I don't believe that's the case, but there are a million different reasons why you don't put all your faith in one person. People need to realize, and they are realizing it, that we, people, we have the power together. Divided, we're powerless, we're slaves. United. And not all of us, because most of the people are going to still be wrapped up in their stupid bullshit X Factor and American Idol and all this crap. But those of us who are actually awake, those of us who actually have awakened our hearts and our conscience, we are the ones that make the difference. But we need to get together 
and be real about what we can do. Stop making excuses, shed the fear, do what we're capable of doing. I love Ron Paul. If for no other reason the consciousness that he has helped uh, rise is so amazing. I support this man and if he ever reversed his stance and did not do what he's saying then I would of course immediately admit that I was wrong and I would condemn him for being a liar but I don't see that happening. My only concern is the rigged voting machines, the electronic voting machines, it's all rigged. Hello, wake up America, it's all rigged. He would have to win by a large, large margin as it is in order to actually get into the White House. So they, they have the rigged voting machines, they could assassinate him, and of course they will continue to play up this whole racism bullshit. And ultimately, it's up to you. It's not up to Ron Paul, it's up to us, it's up to all of us. Don't let this good man go down. Ron Paul, love and respect to you, my brother. I hope you make it. I'm behind you 100%.